Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, the um, functions and calculus question from 2016, so question 8, so, so one of the longer questions. Kieran had has 21 metres of fencing. He wants to enclose a vegetable garden in a rectangular shape, as shown. Okay, and I'm presuming he's going to use all 21 metres of fencing. A. By writing an expression for the perimeter of the vegetable garden in terms of x and y, show that y is equal to 10.5 minus x. Okay, when you are presented with a question like this, it can be hard to see where this is going to come out of. So... All you can do really is is go back and see well well what what are they talking about with respect to this question uh, and see if you can work from there and see if this comes out at the end so by writing an expression for the perimeter of the vegetable garden okay so perimeter is adding up the outside so walking around the outside of your shape what do you get okay so it's a rectangular so we're going to add all the sides um, if it's a rectangle, if the bottom is x, the top is also x, and if the side is y, the side is also y. Okay, so the perimeter, P-E-R-I-M-E-T-E-R, is equal to x plus y plus x plus y, and we're assuming he uses all 21 uh, meters of fencing. Okay, so I started here and I walked, there was an x, there was a y, there was an x, there was a y. Okay, let's tidy it up. X and X is 2X. Y and Y is 2Y. And that's equal to 21. Okay, now I'm looking up here. I can see the Y's on their own on the left and everything else on the right. So let's bring over the 2X so that you get 2Y equal to 21 minus 2X. Let's have a look up here. It's not 2Y, it's a single Y. So let's divide across by 2. You cancel, you cancel, and we'll end up with y being equal to 21 over 2, which is 10.5 minus x. So that is the perimeter of the garden uh, in terms of x. Okay, B part 1. Complete the table below to show the values of y and the area of the garden for each value of x. So they've given us a whole a range of values for x and we have to find the corresponding y. Okay, so for this first one here, okay, um, y would be equal to 10.5 minus 0. Okay, in other words, I'm subbing in that 0 for x. So 10.5 minus 0 is uh, 10.5 okay and the area is length by breadth so it's 0 by 10.5 so x by y is the area of the garden length by breadth okay so 10.0 10.5 by 0 will be 0 okay anything by by 0 is 0 okay let's show how we would find another one y in this case will be equal to that 10.5 that's here minus what value is x this time it's 1 okay so that would be 10.5 minus 1 so it's 9.5 and the area for that one is 9.5 by 1 so that's equal to uh, 9.5 by 1 so 9.5 meters squared okay let's show how we would do one more and then we'll just give the answers so my y in this case would be 10.5 minus x is 2 so 10.5 minus 2 so it's 8.5 and the area is uh, 2 times 8.5 which would be a uh, 17 meters squared. Okay, the next one then would be 10.5 minus three. 
so it's 7.5 and my area 7.5 multiplied by 3 and my calculator is 22.5 Okay, now what I forgot to say at the start and I should have was when they give you um, a column of data like they do here um, before you work out any values, see can you find these values, okay? So see if you can see where they came from because if you can figure out where they came, fr came from, you apply the same method to all of the other pieces, okay? So see, could you have seen that the 6.5 came from 10.5 minus 4? And see, can you see that the area comes from 4 times 6.5? Okay, 5 then anyway, let's proceed. So 7.5, 6.5, 5.5. So 5.5 by 5 is 27.5 meters squared. Okay, next column, 10.5 minus 6 is 4.5. And the area 6 by 4.5 is 27. Okay, next uh, column, 10.5 minus 7 is 3.5. 7 times 3.5, uh, 24.5. Next column, 10.5 minus 8 is 2.5. 8 by 2.5 is 20. Next column, 10.5 minus 9 is 1.5. 9 times 1.5 is 13.5. And the last one, 10.5 minus 10 is 0 0.5. 10 times 0 0.5 is 5 meters squared. Okay, so that's that um, table filled in. Okay. Use the values of a and sorry, use the values of x and a from the table to plot the graph of a on the grid below. Okay, so the values of x, so this row, and the values of a. Okay, so I'm I'm plotting x versus area. Okay, so the first x value I have is zero, and my area is zero. Okay, so that couple is zero zero. So it's down here. Okay, I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it. My next couple is 1, 9.5. So 1 on my x-axis, excuse me, and 9.5 on the area. So 1 on my x-axis up to 9.5 on my area. Okay, 2 and 17, 15, 16.5, 17, 3 4 and 26, 5 and 27.5, 6 and 27, Seven and twenty four point five, eight and twenty, nine and thirteen point five, and ten and five. Okay, and then you try and draw them together as best you can. Um, let me see now how that works. It's a nice curve at the top. Let me turn around my screen and come back down again. Okay, make sure you label the graph. 
which they called it they didn't call it a function name okay so we leave it at that okay so that's all the points and that's them um graphed together so i hope that makes sense always x value first then y okay Use your graph to estimate the maximum value of A and write the corresponding length and width in this table. Okay, so the maximum area, so use your graph. So the maximum area would occur at the top of the graph. Okay, now what's really important in the functions chapter when you're doing graphs and reading them is that you show how you're reading off the values. So using your ruler, dot across here, to the y-axis and show what maximum value of area you're getting. So we're getting what for that? About 27.5. Okay, so I would say the maximum area is 27.5. Um, what length does that correspond to? Well, of course, you can dot down for that because it says use your graph. And it's five. Okay. And if you remember that you had that value from the chart here, you can say uh, the width y was 5.5. .5. Okay. But if you had got a different value from it, you can know that y was equal to 10.5 minus x. So whatever x value you put here, maybe you put, for example, um, 5.25 maybe you got it slightly different which all of us will that's why this question says estimate so they have ranges that's acceptable you could go 10.5 minus that 5.25 that you read off your graph and you'd end up getting a 5.75 or something like that okay so 5.25 um something like that okay um so either way that's how you would get your width okay now next part d part one then said show that the area of the rectangle can be written as a is equal to 10.5 x minus x squared okay so area of a rectangle is always length by width that's what we did when we worked out that table okay what length and width have we in our um rectangle we have x and y okay so we have x by y i'm just not using the multiplied sign here so i'm just using the dot okay which is another way of writing multiplied okay um i have to make it look like this it's got the x's and the x squareds in it so i'm going to use this for my y instead because i can see the 10.5 in it and that would pull the 10.5 into this question so instead of y i'm going to put in 10.5 minus x so it's x times 10.5 minus x so let's multiply that in x by 10.5 is 10.5 x x by x is x squared okay so that's how area can be written as 10.5x minus x squared. Find da dx. Okay, I like these type of questions because even if you didn't manage to find the area here, they've given it to you so you can continue on with the question. Okay, so a is equal to 10.5x minus x squared. So to differentiate, uh, I'm differentiating the A formula, so that's why it's called differentiating A with respect to the letter that's in it, X. Okay, so take down a power, reduce the power by one. Okay, so it's like you're getting rid of an X every time. So this X goes, so it's 10.5. And this one, take down the power. So the two comes down and you get rid of one of the X's that's here. Okay, so that's DA DX. Hence, find the, the value of A, which will give the maximum area. That's super important, that word. It's a key word in calculus. So the theory at a max or a min point, okay, or at max min, uh, dy dx, um, which is dA dx for this question, is equal to zero. 
So what does that mean? Well, it means take your dA dx, which we just found, let it equal to zero and solve it for x. And that will give you the value of x that will give you the maximum area. OK, so instead of dA dx, we have 10.5 minus 2x and I'm saying let that equal to zero. Let's solve it for x. So minus 2x, OK, bring him over the other side and he'll become minus 10.5. Divide both sides by minus 2. He will cancel. And we end up then getting x is equal to minus 10.5 over minus 2, which is equal to what? Minus 5.25 plus 5.25. Why? Because minus over minus cancels to give you plus. So the x value, which will give me my maximum area, is 5.25. OK, so the answer to that one, x is equal to 5.25. OK, find this maximum area. OK, so what happens here is you take your x value and you go off to your area formula, which is here, and you sub in that x value. And when you sub in that max x value, then you'll get the maximum um, area. OK, so in other words, we know the area is equal to 10.5x minus x squared. We know the max x value is 5.25. So when we sub that in, we are going to get the maximum area. OK, so let me put that into my calculator. So 10.5 bracket 5.25 minus bracket 5.25 squared. And I'm getting 27. 0.5625, um, I can't remember what the units were, metre squared for that area. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our level seven in electronic and computer engineering? This is a three year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress onto the level eight in electronics and self-driving technologies and from there to the masters. Check out the link below for more information.